right, we'll get started here in just a moment. Got a few things to talk about. Let's make sure everything's running smoothly. Make sure everything sounds good. All right, let's get this show on the road, shall we? So, we had a pretty substantial event last night into this morning in Missouri. Um, this is not radar of that event that you're seeing here, uh, but we will look at some of the storm accumulation totals from that, as well as some video. Um, but essentially what we had happen was we had a training line of storms that developed and kept training over the same spot. It was a relatively narrow corridor, but it was pretty long and it ended up being over a really densely populated area. So um, this is a hundred year flood for the area, but we did a live stream last year after Hurricane uh, Ida in regards to the hundred year flood that they were having in the Northeast. That was over a much more expansive area, so the deployment opportunities were much greater. However, this is still a storm that would have deployment opportunities, especially for those in the general vicinity um, of St. Louis, 100 mile square radius, definitely um, deployment opportunities or anybody who is well versed in flood is gonna be, they're gonna be on this one. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look here at a few things. We'll pull over this map which gives us a pretty good indication of how much rain fell um, over St. Louis and some of the surrounding communities. Um, over nine inches in downtown St. Louis, 12.4 on the northwest side of town, and you can see Interstate 70 there getting in on some of the action as well as Interstate 64. So really you know, heavily traveled interstate that was completely underwater. In fact, we have a video of that here at one point last night. The interstate was completely underwater. This is uh, you know, either a semi-driver or somebody sitting there in the water, but this is all completely, completely filled up. I mean, there's nowhere you can go on that. So uh, dozens, if not hundreds of cars damaged by this event. In fact, I'd be pretty willing to say there's definitely hundreds of cars that were uh, probably stalled out by this. In fact, here's another good shot um, from Julia Avery this is showing one two three four five cars stranded and this just looks like a neighborhood this isn't even on the interstate so neighborhoods that were low lying were you know obviously heavily impacted by this but as you can see it's a pretty narrow corridor that's probably 20 30 miles at most and then on the northern side of it you still have some pretty good rainfall totals um you know three plus inches in these areas but nothing like this particular band that's set up right over st louis and the interstates here um, I, I mean, literally record-breaking. That broke the 100-year record for St. Louis uh, for a 24-hour rainfall. So there's going to be a lot of homes that were inundated as well as cars that were stranded. So absolutely going to be some deployment opportunities, but it's not going to be a giant mass all-hands-on-deck type situation like um, the remnants of Ida last year in the Northeast where, you know, freaking New York City was underwater, if you remember that. Uh, just that that was absolutely crazy and then a, a ton of other states in the northeast were affected by that this is a relatively narrow swath but a densely populated swath so there there will be there will be claims coming out of this for sure over the next few weeks um and this is not the only place receiving flooding rains we also have the monsoonal flow um, it's a yearly phenomenon that happens uh, in the southwestern desert you get high pressure to the east it draws up moisture from not only the gulf of mexico but also the baja of california pulls up moisture into places like Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado. And since there's not a lot of flow aloft, these storms kind of just go up and then they just sit there and they pump out water. And uh, this is a view from Tucson earlier today. They had some flooding rains and they also had flooding rains yesterday. So two days of pretty severe flooding in the area. You can see here a neighborhood that is under probably at least two feet of water there and flash flood it's it's moving at a, at a decent clip and just uh, a lot of that in fact if we go to the radar here here we're looking at colorado springs they just had a round of severe storms and actually a tornado out east uh, on i-70 out here um, but flash flood warnings up for both colorado springs metro and pueblo these storms are still kind of they're still percolating in there but a little further off to the east and if we zoom out we can see all these green 
um, polygons and octagons and whatever. These are all um, flash flood warnings. So we had some in New Mexico earlier, quite a few in Arizona. We'll go head on over to there, see how Tucson's doing at this point right now. Looks like they lifted the flash flood warning for Tucson, but up here in the higher terrain in the mountains, uh, still flash flood warnings ongoing. Looks like most of the convection has kind of started dying down a little bit out there. As you, uh, as you start to get uh, later in the day, you start to lose that di diurnal heating, heating from the sun. Sometimes you get a little bit of lull in the convection and then sometimes it'll percolate again overnight. But um, pretty much uh, that's the story we have excessive heat where i'm at let's pull up the national weather service here we can see all our warnings and advisories and watches the green here uh this is a flash flood watch so they're expecting more rains here in uh in kentucky west virginia southern indiana southern ohio um and then obviously the entire state of arizona is under a flash flood watch for that monsoonal flow that's just pumping in creating days and days worth of thunderstorms uh, and then these colors here these pinks these reds these oranges these are heat advisories red flag warnings all the things to do with uh high pressure so we've got the high pressure ridge over here we've got high pressure up here in the pacific northwest so 100 plus degree temperatures in both areas extreme drought in fact let me pull out the drought monitor let's take a look at that yeah here's our current drought monitor as you can see here pretty much this entire more than a quadrant Pretty much the entire south, southwest, and west under exceptional drought, under extreme to exceptional drought. And that does not look to be uh, letting up anytime soon. We will get a little bit of relief, at least here in Oklahoma. This cold front that's kind of been stalled out through here, um, which has been leading to those heavy rains and severe thunderstorms just a little bit north of where I'm at. In, uh, I'm in Norman, Oklahoma, just south of Oklahoma City. That's going to slowly drift south. That's going to cool us down a little bit, get us a little bit of rain, but nothing widespread enough to completely eliminate drought by any means. Um, let's go ahead and take a look here. If you can't tell, I'm, I'm sweating a little bit because my AC stopped working um, <laughs> the day that it was 110. AC went out, so... That's been really fun to deal with. I think it's 91 degrees in the apartment right now. But we will prevail, we will continue on. But you can see here, tomorrow I'm gonna to be 104 again, and then as that cold front moves in, cool front, not really cold, it, it, it'll cool off our temperatures a little bit. We'll get into the 90s and upper 80s with some chances for thunderstorms here. Um, but that's kind, of, that's kind of it. As far as severe weather goes, there hasn't been a whole lot. Um, as far as like deployable severe weather, we haven't had major hailstorms over a densely populated area. Had some wind storms for sure, but this uh, this flood in St. Louis is probably the most extreme event to happen in the last month or two. Um, if we go ahead and take a look at, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the forecast models for what everybody's probably interested in, which is hurricane season. It's almost Jul or it's almost August. That's usually when we start seeing our first uh, named storms. And if we look here, pull up the satellite. This is Africa. This is the east coast of Africa, or sorry, the west coast of Africa. And we can see these storms moving on off. This is the initial phase of hurricane season where we start to get these big systems that push off the west coast of Africa. They push out here into the open ocean and when the conditions are right, which they're starting to become more favorable, uh, these will start to become systems. In fact, you can even see a little bit of spin to this one that's out there. I think there's a little bit too much dry air uh, fighting with this one right now uh, for it to go any further, but the overall pattern is going to start to become a bit more favorable uh, as we go on. If we look here, this is our 500 millibar analysis. This is up at the elevation planes are flying at. Um, we can see the orangish red here that's high pressure the blue is low pressure and it's actually picking up on that little system we were just looking at this little swirl right here picking up on a little bit of low pressure right there um, but as we can see here there's a pretty good ridge that's just kind of in place across a lot of the basin here and if we um, you know get something that develops in this region this whole region is what they call the main development region and if we get something that develops and the dry air kind of moves out, which it will eventually, and it'll moisten up, uh, once it gets west, the sea surface temperatures out here are absolutely extreme. Let me see if I can pull up a map. I should have pulled that up. We'll look at some sea surface temperatures. Um, definitely like 32 degrees Celsius last time I was looking, I think. 
let's see yeah, here we go so here's the Gulf of Mexico here's the Caribbean you can see 30 degrees Celsius throughout the entirety of this even all the way up here even all the way up to North Carolina the northern portion of North Carolina I mean that's that's pretty that's pretty intense uh, and then 32 degrees Celsius throughout the entire Gulf of Mexico it's gonna be like the last few guy uh, last few seasons here um, if a storm makes it into this region as it's developing as it's strengthening it's gonna be bad news let's just pray Louisiana does not get hit again because they they do not need it at all um, but you know the the conditions are definitely there for another big Gulf year um, we'll see well how do I mean and there's no way to predict what storms are gonna landfall and what ones won't but we are predicting above average almost all of the people who uh, all of the you know entities that produce these forecasts for you know the below above average season they're all almost anticipating an above average season uh, with multiple hurricanes multiple major hurricanes so we'll just have to keep a close eye on those if they start approaching land um, that's that's about it that's about all we have to talk about if you are um, if you're well versed in flood I really recommend calling some of your uh, calling some of your firms and seeing if there's opportunities for you in st. Louis just let them know you're ready because this just happened last night so they aren't you know they're gonna get claims in over the next few days to you know weeks so it may not be immediate that they need you but letting them know that you're ready to go is always a good thing uh, that's that's really it. That's all I've got to talk about. We haven't had a whole lot of severe weather. I've been pretty uh, I've been pretty bored here, just kind of hanging out. Uh, I went to the Florida Keys and got some water spouts a couple weeks ago, and then I was doing storm chasing tours before that, and we got some tornadoes back in June. Uh, but overall, not not a whole lot. So that's good. We're uh, we're in a little bit of a calm period, and then we might start getting a bit more active as we get into hurricane season here. So. We'll just have to wait and see, but thank you all so much for checking in with this little live stream. The stream is sponsored by Kaplik, um, and if you have any questions, go to cplic.com, and uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll go ahead and cut it there.